So, ladies and gentlemen, it's 1 p.m., it's time for the session, and I want to start with, how was lunch? Great, that's kind of a great start. Okay, we're here today and we want to present on how to auto-generate your Drupal mobile app with PhoneGap. It's presented by Jeff. Jeff Linwood. And me, Fabian Franz. I'm from Trellon and... I'm from Biscotti Labs. Okay, and yeah, um, this will be kind of a fun session, but it's also a beginner session. So if you're into fun, you can stay. But if you're kind of saying like, and expecting some high level stuff, going into code, deep level, um, then this is not the session for you and you have the chance to leave. But you will definitely miss something. But you'll see. Um, the other thing is um, we would like to have the questions part at the end because the presentation flow is not designed to work with questions. Okay, everyone ready? Let's go. No, it's not my phone. Your client is calling. Hello there. Oh, you missed one. Welcome to Drupal Web Shop LLC. What can I do for you? Hello there. Wow, we really enjoyed working with you on our last Drupal 7 website. It works so great. It's, it's fantastic. And now we, we just want to get one step further. You know, it's all about apps today, and we really want a mobile app. Well, before I give you an answer, let's figure out what you want us to build. So, chapter two, gathering requirements. First of all, after some conversations with the client, you find out that the requirements are, it should be a mobile application for Android and iPhone. It should be available in Apple App Store and Android Market. It has to be offline content that can be reached without network. And it should also just get the newest news that you put up on your website directly into the app, so it needs to support online content. It should have native device features because your client really, really wants to use a camera. So, what could we use for that? Well, I think let's do some research. Google is always something good to ask and let's just see what comes up. Oh my God, what is that? I think I'm pretty clueless now. And I think we are really lost in the jungle. It's a movie by mobile application development. But fortunately, we do have a magic wand. And with this magic wand, we'll use it and we'll see what happens. So, are you ready? Are you prepared? Let's do it. Three, two, one, magic. That looks much better. So really, um, what we found out from our Google research is that there are certain kind of um, partitions that we can put in our mobile development. There's, of course, Drupal. It has the services module. It has the Android SDK called Dandy the Drupal iOS SDK, then there's those mobile frameworks like JQ Touch, Sancha, Ajax, jQuery Mobile. Of course, you got the native applications like your Facebook app, Google Maps, whatever. For this, you have the Android SDK with Java and the iOS SDK with Objective-C. 
And then there's also HTML5 with HTML export, responsive design, HTML manifest. And then there's hybrid. And there, for example, you could use titanium, phone gap, and the secret we will today will the mobile app generator. So now that we kind of have the solution space, the next part is we have to analyze those solutions. So this will now be the really boring stuff. You can expect 50 minutes of boredom analysis and it will be very dull. So you can get up your laptop, start stacking emails, very, very dull. And really, really, really boring. Oh, really? No, of course not. Meet the Mobile Tournament 2012. This will be now really, really fast, and it will be just for fun. You can later check the slides online. We'll put them on after the talk. And um, then you can check what is there. It will be too fast to follow. But it's for the fun, and no one wants to have 50 minutes of analysis. So if you are not into this kind of stuff, just ignore the next three minutes. So let's meet the fighters. We have the normal Drupal site, the mobile Drupal site, the web application and the native application. We have the hybrid and we have the mobile app generator. And fight! We have the normal Drupal site, it's Drupalista, and it comes in with techniques. It has menu, blocks, and views, and panels. But it's not mobile by default, it's always online, and it has no native features. No. Mobile Drupal site Omega T. Omega T comes in with responsive design, mobile frameworks, HTML manifest, but it's always online, has no native features. Next one, please. We have the web application JQ, but its technique it has data load via Ajax. It features services module, mobile frameworks, animate transitions, but it's always online. It has no native feature. Services can be really a little complicated. So next one. And then we have the native application. It's native UI and native UI. It has techniques, native code for iOS, Objective-C, native code for Android with Java, but it could be rather complicated. The knowledge could really not be available in your shop. There are two different versions you have to program for, and you have this native UI. So let's meet our next fighter, hybrid application, Hybrix. It's a web application running on the device. It has phone gaps, services, mobile framework. It's offline and online. It has native features. It's for Android and iPhone. It has JS, CSS, and HTML5. We have... <laughs> we have a winner! We have a winner! Hybrix is the winner! <laughs> so... Phone gap one, as you can see, but so what exactly? What exactly is phone gap? And so, what phone gap lets you do is you can make your mobile web site, your mobile web application, using all the stuff that we've talked about here at DrupalCon with jQuery Mobile, with responsive design, with Drupal themes, your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript but you get access to all these really cool smartphone features that you only get with a native smartphone app. For instance, using PhoneGap, you can actually take your mobile website and get it up on the Apple App Store. You can get it up on the Android market. You can have all kinds of really cool native functionality. You can actually use the camera. You can take photos, you can record video. You can get access to the person's contacts on their phone if they let you. Uh, you can do all kinds of interesting things with accelerometers, uh, compasses, gyroscopes. It's a really cool way of taking your existing web programming skills and turning that into a mobile app. And to talk a little bit more about how that all works and some of the native functionality, I'm going to turn it back over to Fabian. 
Yeah. I'm giving you an example here now how this is working because um, really what um, Jeff found out is um, that people do not really know what is PhoneGap. Is PhoneGap jQuery mobile? Is it CSS? Is it JavaScript? What is this PhoneGap? What does it do? So here we have an example. We have written a JavaScript and it's talked to the browser and it says, hey browser, take a picture. And the browser answers, Hey, you, what's wrong with you? I can't take a picture. I don't know how to do that. And yeah, a browser can't take a picture at the moment. So, and this is where PhoneGap comes into play. Um, PhoneGap is really putting in, in this component. You again ask the browser, could you please take a picture? And PhoneGap is answering you, okay. It asks the camera, and the, it knows how to access all the cameras of Android, iPhone, and Windows Mobile. And the camera is asked to take the picture. The picture is gotten back to PhoneGap, and PhoneGap gives this information back to the JavaScript. So um, this should kind of make it more clear of what PhoneGap um, really is. It is a bridge that is extending the browser features so that it can do all this cool stuff. So now that we've uh, looked a lot about um, what I can do with PhoneGap, um, what PhoneGap is, we actually have to ask ourselves the question, hey Jeff, what can I do with PhoneGap? Can I use it for Android and iPhone? It actually supports seven different platforms, all with one uh, code base. What about selling it? I really want to sell it. Can I sell it? Because it's a native app, you can actually sell it on all the app stores. And what about offline content? I really need to have some pages like an about us page, terms and conditions, et cetera. I need those to be always there in the app, even if the user has no internet access. Can I do that? Actually, all you need to do is just copy those into a www folder. It gets packaged up with the app, and it's just sitting on their phone waiting for them to use it. Okay, um, now that we have the online content, um, what about um, the offline content? <laughs> what about the online content? I really want to have the news from my website featured in my mobile application. What would be a way to do that? Probably the easiest way to do that is set up services on Drupal. You can do that with Drupal 6, you can do it with Drupal 7. Take a look at services 3. It's actually pretty easy just to make all the nodes that you want up and available uh, to your users, uh, to your mobile phones, to your Androids, iPhones, mobile web. Put in that services layer and all, these all the PhoneGap apps can start talking to your Drupal server and get fresh content. Okay, um, but what about those native features I've heard about? What does PhoneGap support? What, what can I do with it? So the great thing about PhoneGap is that it's extensible. So right out of the box, it comes with plugins for the camera, push notifications, contacts, plugins, maps. It's really cool. One of the great things about PhoneGap is that you can extend it. So if there's new parts of a native app that you want in your PhoneGap app, you're not limited, you're not stuck. You can always just code those up in an, as sort of a native app style, get those into your PhoneGap app, and you're good to go. Oh, wow, and uh, this is now the matrix. So you really don't have to know all this, but it's just showing that PhoneGap supports tons of features across tons of platforms. So let's check our requirements from the beginning again um, of what we, our client wanted from us. So um, have we fulfilled our requirements? You know, I could go back to that big ugly screen, but I think I remember enough of it. So um, let's see. We have Android and iPhone. It's for sale, offline content, online content, and we have those native device features. Yes, I think we can use PhoneGap for the build-out. 
But before we going into building that, we want to quickly give you some hints of when better not to use PhoneGap. So if you want to create a game and it needs to have really high performance and lots of graphics and needs to be really fast, PhoneGap is not what to use. You really want to use a native application. And when you don't need any of those native features, the offline content or the possibility to put it on a market, then you could end up being better with just creating a web application um, with a mobile theme that kind of would give you the same and um, then phone gap is kind of overkill and just too much. And if you just want to display something mobile, you can just use a responsive design, make a mobile site, and um, you don't have to fiddle with native features. But as we will see later, um, it might be possible to just combine those two. And that's what we come to now, Meet Mobile App Generator. It was published today, or better, this is the publishing, Drupal.org project MAG. It's an extension to hybrid apps. You know, normally those apps are created in the following way. Um, you create the app and you connect it with services. And you have to learn all those mobile frameworks, jQuery Mobile. And for example, you now already made a site, it has a nice mobile theme, and now you have to rebuild all of that again, build it all in JavaScript, connect it with the services, etc. While sometimes you just want to use what you have as your Drupal skills, what you already know, what you are using, and you just want to make this into an app. And this is what the mobile app generator really allows you to do. You can create your app completely in Drupal, just a mobile site. You can test it online. You can integrate it with services. And then with a click of a button, you export it for PhoneGap. You get a nice folder. You plug it in. You can test it on the device. And it all works. And so um, what before took like, I don't know, many, many, many hours of extra development to kind of get your Drupal site connected with your app. You can now use your mobile site and export certain things to it in just five minutes. So um, this is what we now want to see, how we kind of can use this mobile app generator. It's demo time, so let's go. Of course, uh, you just download it, just download MAG, you enable it, you use a nice mobile theme, you create a menu, you create some notes, and then you click export. And this is what we want to take a look at now. So this is the mobile site, as you can see, and it has some nice menu. It's a jQuery mobile site, it has some images, and um, you can see it's from the admin interface, it's just a normal Drupal site with a mobile theme. And it has, at this moment, nothing to do with kind of native features, phone gap, or anything like that. But now, if you want to export it, it's actually quite easy um, with the mobile app generator. We just select it from the menu, and then we can set up a path. At this point, I just set a path of sites all export because I really want to um, make sure I can use um, it in my Git repository and add it there. But you are, of course, free to use any file scheme that Drupal supports. So um, you can even export it directly to S3 and run it from there. It can also help with performance. Um, and then we have a regex for those saving those directories um, because it was the case that some modules were just not advertising all of the images and JS. And last but not least, we select the menu, the main menu. We save our configuration and we generate the mobile app. 
selecting the menu is important because we really are only exporting what is in that menu. And all other pages are kind of going to an offline page that says, if you want to see, just go to our normal website. So it's generated quite quick. And here it is. As I said, not even five minutes. Um, you can start it up, and there you go. And as you can see from the header at the top, it's just static HTML pages, which are all exported now and work nicely with, um, would work nicely with PhoneGap. So um, we have those images in. It has detected all the assets of the web page, and kind of that's, that's it. And what I would like to encourage you is, you've got homework now, you all got to try this out at home. <laughs> so um, the next part is um, how to actually get this into PhoneGap, and this is where I give back to Jeff. So with PhoneGap, you have a couple different choices for actually creating your app. If you're on a Mac, you can create apps for iOS, the iPhone, the iPad. You'll need to install Xcode, which is Apple's developer tools. Those are actually free right now on the Mac App Store, but you'll need a really recent Mac with a really recent version of the Mac OS X. And they're constantly uh, pushing that Xcode stuff out to the latest and greatest Mac. So iPhone and iPad development, though, is only from a Mac. If you have a Windows or a Linux or a Mac, you can actually develop apps for Android using Eclipse and the Android SDK. You'll need to get those set up. Um, best place to do that is to just go to Google's Android site and click install the Android SDK, and they have some pretty good directions in there. Once you have your development environment set up, you actually need to download PhoneGap, and they have an excellent set of installation instructions, no matter whether you're developing for Android or for iOS or for Windows Phone. They actually did a really good job of making that easy. And so go to PhoneGap.com, just follow their directions, they'll get you totally set up, and then all you need to do is create a new PhoneGap project for iPhone or Android from that development tool, and you'll pretty much have a PhoneGap project up and running, and that's an app right, right there, out of the box. So let me just show you a really quick uh, PhoneGap project. So to create a new PhoneGap project, all I would need to do from this Xcode, and this is that Apple developer tool I was talking to you about, about how to create iPhone and iPad. Just go to New Project, pick PhoneGap, click Next. We'll call it Drupal is Awesome. Save it. And that's a PhoneGap project. I already have one set up for DrupalCon right here. And uh, what I can do is show you what Fabian's mobile app generator actually looks like when you're running on an iPhone. And so there's that exact same mobile site that he just showed you how to create. And now it's actually running as an iPhone app. Uh, this little iPhone simulator here is actually just the same as your iPhone that you're holding in your hand. And so you can see how it works. Um, I can actually take that same one and turn it into an iPad app. And there's the exact same site, but now running on an iPad instead of an iPhone. Because we set this up with jQuery mobile, uh, that actually takes care of the whole, am I an iPad, am I an iPhone? You actually have both in one app, in one site, that was just sort of created for you in five minutes. So I'm gonna go back to uh, presentation. And there's even a little more. As Jeff already said, um, some people might not be on a Mac. 
and they still want to try to create iPhone apps or iPad apps, and there's actually a solution for that. Um, what not too many people know is there's PhoneGap built. It's a PhoneGap cloud, build.phonegap.com, and in this case, you would just upload your generated www folder via Git to the PhoneGap cloud, and it's actually completely free for public apps, so if you're kind of in a sector where you can publish everything and have everyone have access to the data directly, you can use it for free. Um, if you use it commercial, you got one app free, the rest costs. The nice thing about the cloud is that it allows you to build directly for seven platforms, um, which um, saves really much time because you might not have the BlackBerry environment, the Windows Mobile environment, the whatever new mobile solution is coming out tomorrow environment. So um, the next part we want to talk about is um, how you can now actually use PhoneGap uh, with the native features. And um, Jeff will now show an example of how good this works with the camera. So one of the things that I've always heard people talk to me about when they want to talk about PhoneGap and Drupal is that they want to take a picture on their iPhone and then upload it to their Drupal site. And that's actually really easy with just JavaScript and PhoneGap. So you don't need to learn any crazy languages. You don't need to get really deep into image processing or something like that. It's actually just a couple lines of JavaScript that basically came right off the PhoneGap documentation. So here's the JavaScript you need to basically take a picture with the phone and then just put it into an HTML image inside your mobile web. So it actually makes things like taking a picture really straightforward using just straight up JavaScript. Another thing that you might um, need is, especially with having online and offline content, uh, the ability to now, if a device is actually connected or if you're at offline. And again, PhoneGap shows how easy this is to use um, because you can, you just add an event listener via the normal JavaScript API an on online function, and here we are just setting up a little alert. There's also more functions in the PhoneGap API that's pretty well documented and easy to understand um, with some basic JavaScript knowledge um, where you can, for example, like, uh, detect if you're on a wireless or if you're on a 3G or uh, just on a mobile data plan and whatever the um, device is really giving to PhoneGap, but especially the difference between being on a wireless or where you could show a movie and being just on a slow connection where you better should not can be quite beneficial. Um, next, we want to show you some tricks of how to develop your PhoneGap apps. Um, the first thing to think here is do really not try to develop on a device. <laughs> um, you will have to do some code, click the button, and you have to wait, then you check it, and you don't really have um, that good um, development and debugging tools as you have in the web, uh, in the web browser. So if you are especially developing for iPhone and Android, use any WebKit-based browser. That would be Chrome or Safari. And if you use one of those two, it usually will be that your app will, on the phone, be exactly looking like in the browser. Um, so that's uh, definitely a trick I can give you. Um, and also do the testing and debugging in the browser. If there's a JavaScript error and you're putting it into the iPhone simulator, you might see it, but it might be a little more difficult to debug. The other thing is, um, now I said you should really test on a browser, but afterwards you need to test on real devices. In my experience, it sometimes came up that um, it was all working nicely and shiny in the browser, and then you were testing it on a real device, and 
then um, you were going with your phone to somewhere else where you were not in your home network and suddenly it broke. <laughs> so um, it really is important to make sure that um, you do a real test before going to the market because um, users will notice and they will be the first to complain with the stars. So, um, and <laughs> actually when I built my first PhoneGap app, I didn't have an iPhone. So what I did was I did go to some store and I was asking them, hey there, could I just check out this app for a moment? <laughs> it worked. Another thing is, um, Especially with PhoneGap, clients could get uh, kind of the idea of, oh, we will just build the app for all of those seven platforms, directly and everything. But um, especially with BlackBerry, I was in another store and it didn't work. So um, you need to test extra for those platforms. And if your client really wants to do that, it might be beneficial, or if you want to do it, it might be beneficial to just get the BlackBerry emulator. The same is true for Windows Mobile, because um, it, it has not the same WebKit engine, so rendering could be different, JavaScript could be different, and they are all of those little quirks that can come up here. And Jeff here has something really nice. He has a Drupal plugin for PhoneGap. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper into PhoneGap and you want to talk to Drupal using the Drupal IOS SDK, I wrote a little plugin that really is just a bridge between the Drupal IOS SDK and PhoneGap to let you use JavaScript to access some Drupal services. You know, your nodes, your views, your comments, whatever. Um, that's all up on that GitHub there. And there's also a, a cool little sample project that lets you use the camera and jQuery mobile to upload, you know, pictures up to a Drupal site. So check that out if you want. Another thing that um, is really, really handy when developing now you want to test with a real device um, is a little trick I'm using, especially when I'm using the mobile app generator. So. Um, in PhoneGap, you have a setting that's called, especially for the iPhone SDK, it's called external host. And this really means it's a whitelist where you can specify what kind of um, hosts are whitelisted. And those whitelisted hosts won't start up a new browser, but actually it would start in the same WebKit. And now what you can do, if you are kind of developing your site locally on the local host, you can just add this function on device ready um, with uh, location.arep, and you can just forward to your mobile app. And in that way, you don't have to rebuild your app again and again, but you can just change it in your web browser and in your normal environment, and then you can even test it on the SDK again and again and again. And really, um, with PhoneGap and especially also the mobile uh, app generator that we have introduced here today, um, it's really important that um, you play around. Um, as I said, this is your homework. Um, it can be really fun. <laughs> you know, this experience when your app finally is running on this, this phone and you can download it from the market and user comments are coming in and the reviews are coming in and you are like, wow, that's great. Or think about your favorite restaurant or so. They might already have a website, they might already have a mobile site, but now you could provide them with a little effort and just creating this folder with a mobile app generator, um, you could provide them with a mobile app as well. And um, I heard more and more that, pe that just local restaurants, local businesses, they all want an app. So this is really an opportunity here where um, you can do really fun stuff and nice things. 
we are already at the questions part. Um, we could also demo a little more. That would be also a possibility. Um, but I think let's start with questions. Well, let me ask a real simple question. Could you drill in a little bit on the first part where you built your site in Drupal and then, then you generated HTML and so on? But you used a, a mobile theme. Because I haven't done this before, are there are there mobile themes available you know, on Drupal.org? And <laughs> how much do you need to know of jQuery to do this? That's a really, really great question. And actually, I was shocked. Because I was preparing the, uh, the presentation, and I was saying, OK, I'll just choose any of the available mobile themes on Drupal.org. And I was founding, finding three <laughs> that kind of looked like something from the start on. And I didn't have to put in a lot of effort to have it look like a mobile web application. One of them was just a theme looking mobile, but not really application-like. The other one is um, the Nokia theme that's just available for Drupal 6. So really what in the end came out is um, this is a jQuery mobile theme. It has some little bugs. Um, I had to fix, I think, three bugs to prepare for the presentation. I put them later in into the issue queue, so um, that should be taken care of. And you can really use it. Um, and the other thing I did install is a jQuery mobile UI. But fixing those bugs and putting in the jQuery mobile UI and enabling the theme was basically everything I did to just have it looking like this. Before it was Garland with the menu at the top and the notes below, I enabled the theme and it was looking like this. And yeah, um, I hope this answers the question. Uh, hello. Um, do you guys support speech recognition on this or any plans for it? So the question was about speech recognition. As far as I know, you would have to support that with some sort of native library. I don't think that iOS comes with a good one, if it comes with one. Um, I don't know about Android, but it's certainly not part of the standard PhoneGap API. From what I understand, you have to license some very expensive libraries to get sort of like Siri type speech recognition into your app. Thanks. Hi. My question is about uh, analytics. Is there a connection to uh, Google Analytics or I don't know what's in uh, the iOS? So that actually raises an interesting point. Uh, as I was doing some research for the uh, Drupal mobile guide, as part of the uh, Drupal 8 mobile initiative. There's actually a special plugin for Google Analytics for jQuery mobile to make sure that when users hit the pages, because everything's through Ajax, that a Google Analytics gets recorded. So you'll actually get, if you have a Google Analytics module, then it should be recorded. There's other ways to get analytics from a native app, but that probably makes sense to integrate everything with Google Analytics for your desktop web and your mobile web and your phone gap app. Does that answer your question? Two questions about the offline content. Sure. First is, uh, can I download just a subset based on some criteria? That's exactly what the mobile app generator is doing. It's only exporting a subset, and you define the subset by defining the menu. Um, in this case, I just had the main menu, and you, this was actually also the menu you were seeing. But you could also define a hidden menu with lots more content, and um, it really is, is exporting everything you specify. And what's not exported is going to an offline uh, page, which you define as an offline alias, for example. And uh, then the user hits this offline page, and um, they can write something like, well, this page is not available in the app, but if you want to know more, you can visit our web presence here and get more information. Okay, and by content, can that be um, 
a content type of, of various sorts. Could you repeat? I didn't uh, get. Could the content downloaded be uh, a content type, like an article, for example? Um, at the moment, the content is supporting notes, but it would be very easy to also support other entities. Um, for ease of use, it was um, made with notes, but um, it could be easily extended. Um, but it's not content type. We had an article there, we had a page there. You can specify whatever criteria you want. Okay. It's kind of, you just have to create the menu. My second question then is, is if I make a change offline, does it sync, does it sync back to the main site? Um, no, you shouldn't do changes offline. You should do changes online and regenerate your app. In that case, um, the workflow would be working like this. Um, you would just regenerate it into the same directory. It would override with the new data. And then what you would do is kind of you would uh, drag this folder again into PhoneGap or use your version control system to do it. But if you want to have online content kind of, then kind of um, you would use services here. Three very quick things. One, this was an awesome presentation. Thank you guys. Seriously. <laughs> Two, the menu position module that John Albin did would be really cool if it was integrated with this so that I could say all articles under this menu position would get converted over to mobile. Just a thought. That's uh, a very good idea. Um, if I do menu tree, uh, would I get? Uh, is it hooked in there? I, I'm not. I'm not sure on the details, but it's. I think it's called menu position. I, I, I know the module. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking about yeah. where it hooks in, kind of. Okay, that's a yeah, little that, technical for <laughs> beginner. But yeah, that's a very great idea because that would allow a lot more flexibility. You could like put a taxonomy term on anything, yeah. call it mobile, and then. Definitely, um, and then you it would kind of auto-generate your menu. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which would exactly. give it a lot more flexibility. But yeah, I believe it should work. And number three, uh, how does it handle user sessions? Can I have, for example, people log in or create an account using this system? Um, in general, the exported pages would not kind of be online. Um, but um, PhoneGap in itself, um, you can log in very easily. You want to talk a little about that because you have that? Sure, actually, so the way you would do that is to use the services API, and you can actually use like System Connect, user login, user logout, and then you'll have an authenticated session. Um, be sure in services to enable session authentication for your, for your endpoint or you'll get these annoying errors. Um, but it's definitely very, very possible, and that's actually how that camera app works on my GitHub is you know, you log in as Joe Schmo or whatever. Hi guys, nice presentation, I echo that. Um, I'm not a coder here, but uh, the developer I work with uh, developed an application, uh, it's in a mobile application right now that it's using, uh, it's a content type uh, with views to like generate restaurants, you know, in it, and you could set like Asian restaurant or whatever and it, it could that be exported? Um, I mean, could that be brought in and then I know I mean, how's the data updated when they go and update something? You know, one of the one of the items in Drupal, like a new restaurant or change a phone number or something. How would that happen? Yeah, uh, you always. Um, the point is, and that's kind of the nice thing about it. You build your app kind of um, in the way you want. So if you have a block where you say this one should always be loaded via AJAX, you could use any of the AJAX load modules, and the mobile app generator would just generate your app but the JavaScript for reloading the AJAX would be there, so um, it would actually try to load the block, and you could, for example, just have a placeholder in there or the older information, just have it in there, then you use AJAX load or AJAX block or what it's called or just some custom JavaScript code to actually reload the view, and um, then you could kind of have an app that's kind of, if it's online, has newer information than if it's offline, but Usually, in this case, kind of how apps would be updated would be through the, through the App Store. Though we are also working on the approach that um, kind of 
um, you do an update online and the app is kind of downloading those updates. But it has some tricky bits, like for example, think of a view which is on one page and on the other as well, and then you have to update all of the pages, which could be, could be a rather huge download. Thank you. Uh, I guess along the same line of what we just talked about, to create an experience like we have of the DrupalCon app, where it has the sessions and knows what sessions there are, and then you can press refresh. Is that like something that your module could support? It doesn't sound like it. Would it be like a SQL store, local, something? Um, you, you are mainly talking about a kind of online content or synchronizing content. Yeah. Um, that was kind of also what I was going in, in the previous question, but it's a little different here. Um, the DrupalCon app, as far as I've used it, um, you are not updating it over the App Store, but it's kind of downloading the data. Um, what you could do, and that's supported, um, I have that running in um, kind of another approach, which is uh, similar to the mobile app generator and will be combined with it later, but not just now, um, is um, you could, for example, do the following. You just put it on S3, like we've seen if that's possible, and then you add a little code um, to your JavaScript. Um, with PhoneGap, you have a file API. So what you could do is kind of you could create a folder um, where you are downloading all the stuff, and when you, sh when you are sure that you have all the files, you just switch over. But um, kind of um, if you just want to update information, kind of um, just reload things, I think it might be kind of better to use services for that at that point. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the second question I had was, uh, does your module support uh, the ability to create a different experience by serving two different themes, one for the iPhone, one for the iPad, for example? Um, or how would you do that? <laughs> That kind of depends. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're using a responsive design, for sure, because kind of the same rules to apply, you get kind of the responsive um, device with features, and there jQuery Mobile, of course, also helps completely. But if you're talking like, um, if the user agent is an iPad, then you get this side. If the user agent is a mobile site, then you get this side. But what you could do is kind of okay, that's still manual, but it's two clicks. You change the theme to mobile, and you change the folder to WW iPhone, export, change the theme to iPhone, WW iPad, export, and you just create two separate apps. Awesome, thank you. In the case of, um, <clears throat> in the case of say, user-generated data, uh, it sounds like PhoneGap is best if data is pushed from uh, Drupal to the user, but in terms of, say, the, the user-generated data, uh, account statuses, or, say, geolocation check-ins, is PhoneGap uh, better, or is it uh, an effective way to go over native? And would, be that, would that something be done through, say, services and API? So PhoneGap itself lets you use services. It's, you know, you can do pretty much anything you want in PhoneGap in terms of connecting to an outside system. So if you wanted to do check-ins or you know, create comments or something like that, you could absolutely do that. You would just simply create either an HTML form that talked directly to Drupal. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it, is actually in PhoneGap to say, hey, you know what? I need a live connection anyway to get a comment. Throw up a mobile-themed add comment, add node page on your Drupal site. You don't have to write extra JavaScript. You don't do anything extra. You've kind of got that right there. You've got like everything built in, that's probably the easiest way to do it. The other way to do it is to make a JavaScript call um, you know, basically back up to services and say, hey, services, you know, here's a new comment you know, for this you know, node or what have you. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Uh, I also would like to kind of um, extend a little in regards to the mobile app generator. What's nice about just exporting a subset is that, for example, before we just removed it, um, but before you had this add new comment on the article content type. So what you could do now is you could have the same app 
that's running in PhoneGap online. And he could just switch the user over from his O online, uh, offline experience to an online experience by letting him logging in, posting commands, and just having kind of, um, as the mobile app generator is not touching the URLs, for example, for posting commands, um, that would still work. And um, you could, would kind of um, post it there, and then you could, would get the response. And then the only thing kind of you need to do is kind of to get back to the offline part. But I think on the online part, that would be just some lines of JavaScript code or even a form state. But um, that would be kind of future work. But it's interesting. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You've given us all lots of homework. Thank you. <laughs> great, great presentation. I love the battle at the start. Um, my question is, you mentioned uh, titanium as a hybrid at, at the top. Um, can you talk about advantages and uh, disadvantages of that versus phone gap? I can't. So I'm not a titanium developer, but I am a native developer. So I, I usually develop in um, Objective-C myself. Titanium is a great solution if it supports your needs in advance. So you have to do a little bit more research to make sure that what you're trying to do is easily done in titanium. But the big advantage of titanium is you get one code base um, for both iOS and Android. The downside is that while it does comp compile to a native app, you don't necessarily get every native feature right away when Apple releases it. But I know that the company behind Titanium is putting a lot more effort into making that development really easy for people. For those of you who aren't aware of what Titanium is, it's a way of creating iOS and Android apps in pure JavaScript, talking to the Titanium API, and then that actually creates an iPhone app or an Android app from one JavaScript code base. So does that kind of answer your question? It's a very different approach from PhoneGap. Yep, yep thanks. Uh, would the uh, mobile app generator support web forms uh, through the export, or would you have to do something extra to get that submission to post to the site? As I said, um, if you have a, um, a web form is a content type, so yes, at the moment, uh, I haven't tried it. <laughs> Short answer, long answer. Um, I believe what would happen kind of is that the site would be exported, but that the post URL was not changed, so it would still connect to from where you kind of generate the app. And um, if you're not generating from local host, but kind of from your live site, um, this means, um, which will still be fast because it's all online on the web server than the creation of the app, um, which means that probably it would just post to the website, but the problem is you are then online. Uh, you would still need to put uh, your online URL into the whitelist. And kind of the same answer as before, you would need to add some, just some custom JavaScript on the submission succeed page to just get the user back to the uh, to an offline su submission succeed page. But that should be quite easy to do, especially with web form. Thank you. First, I want to say thanks for releasing the module. That's an awesome start. That's great. So I want to give you this. Um, two specific questions I've been starting to develop with this stuff. Um, and maybe this is future development um, to look into. Have you done anything with ghost clicks and using um, the A object tab, tab tags versus like um, a different tag and replacing links? I didn't quite get the question quite. Have you heard of what's called ghost clicks when you're developing with PhoneGap? Um, no. <laughs> oh, it has to do with the browser doing something three to milliseconds after you click because they're waiting to see if you do a second click, like a double tap versus a single tap. Mm -hmm. and so I was just curious if you've done anything to replace the href tags with something else in your solution. Um, um, actually, this is taken care of by a mobile framework. This is normally nothing to do with PhoneGap. Um, I know of the problem, but jqtouch, jQuery mobile, center touch, they kind of all have, so have solutions for that, for replacing the click event with the touch event. That's basically everything. 
everything you need to do um, to kind of get this to work in that. Um, in the phone gap, kind of for exporting things, I'm using an approach very similar to the CDN module and boost modules that were kind of the parents of the idea um, for doing that and for kind of getting everything out, okay. Pl plus some dirty tricks. <laughs> so a real quick one. So I went to the project page and the project is up there, but there don't seem to be any releases published uh, yet. Um, I pushed a release to day morning. Um, I so. was under the impression that a release, if I pushed it, is kind of coming up on the next cron run. But what you can do it, to check it out already is um, you can hit the revisions tab and can, you can just check out the 7x branch. Oh, it's still telling me no releases available, but, but we'll, we'll find it. Yeah. Um, anyone find uh, a webmaster of Drupal and he can push the release out. <laughs> do you know? Do you know offhand whether PhoneGap supports access to the calendar on the phone? Take a look at the matrix, right? <laughs> I, I didn't see anything listed for calendar on the matrix. That's what I, I was asking. I think you're correct. It is not supported. Um, and that's probably simply because the vendors themselves don't have that as one of the things they provide access to. So it's, it's not really PhoneGap's fault. If I'm writing a regular iPhone app, I probably don't have access to that either, if, if that helps answer your question. OK, thanks. And I think we have time for one more question. And we have, here's the lucky. It's a super quick one, I think. I just. I just installed it and used it, and it worked great. Um, that's fantastic. Um, wow, I just have a great. About the, does it only publish the pages under the menu item that you specify on the config screen to actual flat HTML files? Does that make sense? Yes. Like when I went to the export file, there was only, like I just had an empty sandbox, there was only index. So do I need to add menu items to that parent menu item to get them to publish to flat files on the export? Um, everything you need to, could you repeat the question a little? Um, what I had in the menu is I had the front page in there, so it could be if you are not having the front page in the menu that it does not work. <laughs> that might be a possibility. I just ran Devel and it made a bunch of nodes without menu entries, and they didn't export out as flat files. Is that because they didn't have menu entries? Yes. It, it'll only export pages that exist in the menu? Yes, um, okay. but as I'm quite dumb about the menu, it could be because I'm not checking the hidden flag or so that you can just hide the entries in the menu. And as the other person said, it might work with menu location. And if it doesn't work yet, it might be very easy to implement just to have it work with taxonomy or whatever. But really, um, there's just one function that's kind of, it's three lines of code that's doing this exporting via menu, and it could be easily extended. Contributions are welcome, of course. Well, it works great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so um, thanks a lot for attending our presentation. It was a great Q&A session. I'm Fabian Franz from Trellon. You can follow my post on trellon.com slash blog. Uh, or on GitHub, Fabian France, Twitter, at Fabian France. Uh, same basically for me. You can follow me at jefflinwood.com or GitHub Jeff Linwood or Twitter Jeff Linwood or pretty much anything else Jeff Linwood. Find me there. Yeah, and I want to thank the company Trellon for really sponsoring development of the mobile app generator. Please vote on the session for the mobile tournament 2012.